It is another gorgeous San Diego evening at Petco Park will be packed. A sellout crowd on hand tonight as the surging Chicago Cubs take on the San Diego Padres in their fantastic new home here in downtown San Diego. It's the middle game of this three game weekend series and all the fun of Cubs and Padres baseball comes your way here on WGN Sports. Hi friends, Chip Carey, Steve Stone. Great to be back at the ballpark. Last night, the Cubs broke in this place in grand fashion. A record-setting night for Greg Maddox. Jose Macias, three hits, three RBIs. And, oh, yes, Sammy Sosa went deep as well. This is a great pitcher's park, and last night, Greg Maddox looked as good as he's looked in quite some time. He dominated his Padre team, and it's a good offensive team now for San Diego. But, Chip, this is a pitcher's park, and look for Sergio Mitre to try to take advantage of that tonight. And it is a doubles and triples park. And with that in mind, the Cubs hoping that a couple of the men that play off the bench get starting roles tonight and have big success as well. Jose Macias starting his third game in a row. All he's done the last two is hit six for 11. Obviously, it pencils out to 540. Todd Hollinsworth done a real good job against Adam Eaton, who goes to the mound for the Padres. As the Cubs try to take the second game of the series, they're one game in back of Houston coming into this one, and even though they're 2-2 two and two on the trip, they are gaining some ground. Tickets are tough to come by here in San Diego, and you know the hometown kid Sergio Mitre is punishing the pass list tonight. Well, he graduated from Chula Vista. That's just down the road, and he's going to go head-to-head -head with Adam Eaton, who was a number one draft choice, the 11th pick in the country back in 1996. In that time, the Philadelphia Phillies thought that he was going to be a star. It hasn't worked out that way, but he's fit nicely into the Padres' rotation. And Steve's right. The Cubs playing very well at the moment on the road. They're a game back entering play tonight in the Central Division race, and they'll try to gain some ground on those throws with a victory in Game 2 tonight. Stay tuned. The Cubs and Padres are coming up next here on WGN Sports. still get your friends fix at six is ready to give you cubs ticks next week watch friends at six on wgn when you see the friends fix at six phone number during the show call in if you're the ninth caller you and a friend walk away with two tickets to a cubs home game and a friend's party pack we won! next week when you can still see friends at six on wgn life is good again look for the get your friends fix at six and win cubs ticks contest only from wgn chicago's wb leon well, to the surprise of everyone, you've made the team. You're now a two-sport athlete. At least, Chuck. Don't forget the basketball and hockey season are both just around the corner. You can't be serious. You'd actually try four professional sports at once? Yeah. But the seasons overlap. What about the conflict? Well, if the wallet's open wide enough, I don't see any conflicts. I'll catch it, kick it, hit it, punch it, throw it. It don't matter. As long as somebody's paying, Leon's playing. <sighs> the soccer team's looking for a goalie. What's it pay? Hey, Cubs fans, keep your eye on the ball. Belted deep toward left. We're going to drive. The Cubs are on the board. Every time a Cubs player hits a homer at Ridley, you could be a winner. It's the Southwest Airlines How Far Did It Fly Home Run Contest. After every Cubs homer, write down the distance along with your name and address and send it to WGN-TV. Ten winners will receive two round-trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. For every Cubs homer, ask yourself, how far did it fly? From Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the Chicago Cubs. Welcome back to Petco Park in San Diego, California. And this, Steve, is a magnificent new facility. The new home of the Padres has started to show some of its characteristics. Right now, it is a terrific pitcher's ballpark. But it has some great features all its own. The Western Metal Supply Company down the left field line. Feature that I love the best is that. The berm and the outfield grass where for $5, fans can walk in off the street sit on the grass watch the game on a huge jumbotron scoreboard right behind the batter's eye and if you want to pay three bucks more you can sit in the bleachers and let the kids play in the sand ground right behind the fence but well, what i like the best is the fact that it's 402 to left center and 411 to right center and this is a terrific pitcher's park if you're going to hit the ball out you better hit it out early in the ball game because as it gets darker and a little moister and damper here in san diego 
it becomes Death Valley in the alley. Now we saw early in the ball game, Corey Patterson hit one over the 396 mark in straightaway center. Later on at night, that probably wouldn't have gone. So you can challenge hitters here. And with that in mind, the Padres are last in the National League in homers. They've only hit 21 as a team. And only 10 of them here. And it's got to be frustrating for the Brian Giles and Ryan Kleskos on this Padre team. They're the left-handed Thunderbolts, and they can't hit the ball out consistently to right field here, although it will go right down the left field line, as we saw last night. Well, if you pull either side, left or right, you can hit it out. It's only 322 down the right field line, 334 down the left field line. But it does jut out rather abruptly. And there's the Friar, or as we like to call him affectionately, our Pete Toma clone. He's proudly waving the Padre banner tonight as the Cubs face them and try to beat them in game two of the series. Here's a look at the Cubs Pepsi lineup. Pepsi it's the Cola. Macias leads off at second base. Three hits for Macias including two triples in the series opener. Then it's Ramon Martinez batting second. Sammy Sosa in right. Moises Alou a sizzling road trip. Todd Hollinsworth giving Derek Lee a night off. Aramis Ramirez at third base. Then Corey Patterson batting seven for the third consecutive game. Michael Barrett eighth and the hometown product of San Diego Sergio Mitre will pitch in that night. And there's a look at the defense and the star of last night Khalil Green who was brilliant three different highlight real efforts. It's Klesko Long and Giles left to right not a real good defensive outfield with Burroughs Green Loretta and Nevin a pretty good defensive infield Hernandez behind the plate you can run on him and add neat Adam Eaton on the hill. He can get that fastball up there in the low to mid 90s but they would like to see him occasionally hit his spots with the fastball in the high 80s. He's off to a slow start one and three this year nine and twelve last year two years removed from Tommy John surgery and they're counting on him and Jake Peavy to be the one two cornerstones of this rotation with David Wells forming a formidable trio when healthy. C.D. Buckner has the ball and strike responsibilities tonight. And Jose Macias, the leadoff job for the Cubs, and he takes the ball high, and we're underway. 67 degrees at first pitch in Southern California tonight. The Cubs enter play. Game out of first, now a game and a half as Houston has posted a final. They've beaten the Mets tonight. Macias, three hits in the series opener last evening, including, Steve, a couple of triples. One in the ninth inning, cleared the bases, and broke the game open, 6-1 the final. Well, if you can pull that overhand curveball that Eaton throws, he can run all day if he hits it to right center. Slashed down the left field line. That will reach the seats. Pretty comfortable down the line. 334 to the Western Metal Supply building in left. 358 to straightaway left, 402 left center, 396 to center field, 411 in right center, and 322 down the right field line with that real odd angle on the wall at the Petco side. One hopper to Loretta at second, and Macias is a crack, retired here in the first inning. And since we're on the road, let's take a look at our hotels.com feature this evening. Well, last night they came very close to capacity. Tonight they will probably go over capacity. And there you see the dimensions of this beautiful ballpark with downtown San Diego. The vista we look out over. Robo Martinez had an RBI in the game last night. He bats with the bases clear here in the first. And a good moving fastball from Eaton is in for a strike. Ramon has supplanted Corey Patterson as this team's number two hitter for the moment. And he's done good work both with the bat and with the glove. Comes two and two so far on the road trip. Beat the Dodgers 7-3 two nights ago, 1-6-1 here yesterday. You can play 500 baseball on the road without your two big horses at the top of the rotation. You're doing good work, and the Cubs played very well the last two times out. Another chance for Loretta at second. And he'll make that. Two outs. Well, comparatively, this is a very slow infield. In San Diego at Qualcomm, 
the infield was lightning fast and if the infielder didn't have any kind of angle on it it would shoot through but this is called bullseye Bermuda and it's coarse it's thick and it really slows down any ground ball so the infielders here at home probably will look like they have much more range than they'll look like in some of the ballparks on the road. Sammy christened this place nicely last night didn't he he hit a rope into the second deck in straightaway left field last evening got a hanging breaking ball from his former teammate Ishmael Valdez and he hit it a mile I would think Eaton wouldn't be throwing that overhand curve early in the count and certainly not for a strike Sammy's next home run will move him past Mike Schmidt he am the Hall of Famer for the Phillies with 548 career home runs. The 2 0 count. A little late, two balls and a strike. Well, that fastball was at 95. And that's how good the arm of Adam Eaton is. He was number one draft choice, 11th pick in the country in 1996. And Sammy's not going to catch up to it up there. That was 96. You're just going to have to lay off it. If he doesn't, then it will be. Just another in the many strikeouts that most power hitters have. Here comes the 2 2 pitch from the Padre right hand. And he took strike three right down the middle. Three up, three down for Eat. Coming off a terrible start last time out against the Marlins. Now San Diego comes up against hometown kid Sergio Mitre. A focus and a Dell. A focus and a Dell. Get the car and you'll go far with a focus and a Dell. The Dell PC is free. The Dell PC is free. The printer's fat. The monitor's flat. The Dell PC is free. Get into any 2004 Ford Focus with 0% financing or 2,000 cash back and get a Dell computer with a flat panel monitor and printer all free. A Focus and a Dell. always been a nation on the move in a rush to go west to be the first on the moon don't fence me in is chiseled into our national character it's in our company's character as well that's why singular wireless is such an important part of SBC we are and will continue to be a very active and vital member of the most mobile society on earth SBC going beyond the call financial services we're looking at only three points. Deduction loan term receivables. The luxurious Hyundai XG350L. With America's best warranty. It's getting noticed in more ways than one. That's a view of the California Tower at Balboa Park, which, of course, is the home of the great San Diego Zoo. And here's a look at the Padres' starting lineup. Sean Burroughs leads off at third base. Mark Loretta bats and plays second. Brian Giles in right field, playing with a heavy heart. We'll tell you about that a little later on. Phil Nevin at first base today. Ryan Klesko in left. Terrence Long in center. Hernandez will catch. Khalil Green, a highlight reel defensively last night. And Eaton, of course, will pitch in at night against Sergio Mitre. There's a Pepsi defense. Pepsi, it's the cola with a Lou Patterson and Sosa left to right. Ramirez, Martinez, Macias, and Hollinsworth in the infield. Michael Barrett behind the plate. Burroughs to work first, and Sergio misses with the ball high. One ball, no strikes. Burroughs, one for four in the series opener last night. And you have to play him to hit the ball to the opposite way if you're going to go away. And you figure this ballpark should be a pretty friendly place for Sergio Mitre. He'll give up some yardage with the fly balls, but it's tough to hit it out as we've talked about. Off his thumbs and off his foot, too. One ball, two strikes to Burroughs. A good game plan against Burroughs, at least at this point of his very young career, is pitch him away, play him away. You don't want him to pull any soft stuff, because he can run all day if they hit it to right center. Now we can't do that, kid. One ball, two strikes. That's well off the plate. And it's two and two now. And look at where Corey Patterson is playing. I mean, he's way around toward left and center field. 
Well, they want to close that gap in left center. Sergio coming off a no decision against the Rockies. He gave up three runs, ten hits in six innings of work. So he did a real good job of minimizing Colorado damage in that ball game, but he had a lot of base runners. And Burrow's working the count nicely here in the first inning. Padres have never seen me trade pitch. That's another reason to try to take the counts as deep as you possibly can. And you see he hits the ball to center and left very rarely pulling the ball. That's why you don't want to throw him any soft stuff on the inner portion. Tap toward third. Ramirez gives ground. Gloves grabs and high toward the stretch at first. Got Burroughs by a half step. One man down. Pretty good play by Aramis. He didn't get him by much and credit Burroughs with hustling down the line. Takes this ball the opposite way. Good pitch by Mitre. A long throw across the diamond. And Eric Cooper on the call. He gets him by a half step. That'll bring up Mark Loretta, the pride of Northwestern University, hitting 308. Boy, has he found a home at second base and second in the order for the Padres. He's been great for him the last year and a half. The Cubs came very close to getting him as a free agent. In the end, the Padres had a place for him to play every day, and the Cubs were going to use him as a swing man. And Loretta has resurrected his career here in San Diego. This guy last year hit 314. He's not going to show you a whole lot of power, but he's a real steady second baseman and a steady contact hitter. Two balls, no strikes. You mentioned in our game last night, the key to beating these guys is keeping Burroughs and Loretta off the bases in front of the man who hits third for them, Brian Giles. Well, Giles and Nevin. Despite the fact that Nevin and Klesko haven't really done much yet, they will. And four straight puts Loretta on here in the first inning of play. And speak of the devil, here is Brian Giles. In case you missed it, his brother Marcus was involved in a horrific collision in Miller Park tonight and has broken his collarbone. He'll be lost six to eight weeks after colliding with Andrew Jones tonight. Last night, Giles made the last out of the inning in the first, the third, and the sixth as the Cubs kept everybody off base ahead of him. Well, they could do it here with a double play ball. Sergio got three of those against Colorado his last time out. But he's missed five in a row. One ball, no strikes. Right now, you can't pick up the spin on the breaking ball. But if you don't get ahead with the fastball, then that becomes a moot point. So Michael Barrett going out there to talk with him. This Padre team, a lot like the Cub team, in that although they'll be aggressive on the base pads, they don't steal a great deal. They may have to change that philosophy if they can, especially 81 times in this place. Well, hitting so few home runs, you have to manufacture runs. No movement. The pitch downstairs. Ball two. Sergio pitching himself into a first inning problem here. It's a good time right now to throw a straight change because Giles is squeezing the sawdust out of the bat, looking for a fastball middle in. A little roll foul passed first Giles now a two ball one strike count Giles came over from the Pirates and was hitting everything in sight the last two weeks of spring training then he started the year in a terrible slump and only now is starting to come out of it for San Diego broken back Hollinsworth gives ground he'll fire to second one late tag of the bag how about that Bit of footwork by Ramon Martinez to get the second out and retire Loretta. Well, Hollinsworth got a break because that bat landed about six, eight inches from him. I don't think that he saw it. He had some concentration, and as he's going to make this play, watch the bat. I mean, that landed right in front of him, and Jose deciding to use. Boy, I don't know oh, how in the I world Ramon saw that one. It came right over the right shoulder of Loretta. A little Fred Astaire footwork over at first to take care of 
the San Diego second baseman. So Giles at first with Nevin in the batter's box. Nevin to this point has not really enjoyed hitting here either. He's been frustrated by the big ballpark. The first 20 times the Padres have played here. One ball, no strikes. Well, this is a guy that's going to hit a lot of home runs. And he has enough power to hit it out in right or right center field. But they have an edict for Phil Nevin. Regardless of what you do at first base, do not dive. He was in the outfield. Every time he dove for a ball, he injured his shoulder. They can't afford to lose him for any length of time because this is a great part of the right handed punch of this team. Roots Bochi looking on. He's been here seemingly forever. Two balls, no strikes. Sergio falling behind a lot of these Padre hitters early in the game. And a big cut and a miss. Nevin almost sat down. Two balls and a strike. Eddie, you see Nevin asking Barrett, what the heck was that pitch? Well, he hasn't seen movement like that for a while, and he was geared up for a fastball. He got the fastball. But that one just dove down and in, and he swung well over the top of it. Two balls and a strike. That missed inside for ball three. If you were to see Greg Maddox and Sergio Mitre, You'd say me and my shadow. Sergio has been picking the brain of that man virtually every day on the Cub bench. Nevin pulls that ball toward Ramirez. He'll go to second in plenty of time, and the Padres are done in the first. The hometown boy does good in the first inning. Nothing happening for the Padres. No score after one. Nobody does it like Southwest Airlines. We always have low fares, even at the last minute. You are now free to move about the country. At GMC, we know that payloads don't need to stretch their legs. Listen to XM satellite radio, enjoy dual climate control, or watch DVDs. But people do. Introducing the new GMC Sierra 1500 Crew Cab. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by the 4000 CarQuest Auto Parts stores across North America. You'll find it at CarQuest. And by Honda. See your Honda dealer to learn more about the great value Honda has to offer. Common. What do the Honda Pilot, the CRV, and the Odyssey have in common? Number one, each has the best resale value in its class. And number two, each received a five star crash test safety rating. And again, there's nothing common about that, is there? Now, for a limited time, lease an Odyssey EX with a rear entertainment system for $259 a month for 24 months. Scoreless after one for Moises Alou, whose bat has been sizzling, and he hits a rocket to left center field and deep. That ball is going to one-hop the wall. Alou on his way to second with a leadoff double. That's his seventh hit of the road trip. Well, Moises Alou crushed that ball, and it just barely landed on the track. That's a home run in a lot of ballparks, just not this one. And he gets a first ball fastball middle in and puts a charge into it. So now you have the guy on the Cubs ball club that's hit eaten the best coming up next. Todd seven for 13 with a couple of home runs against Adam Eaton a chance to score first again in San Diego tonight. And that one well off the plate for ball one here the Cub fans start to make some noise now and the Padre fans are booing him. They're yelling out, let's go Cubs. Look at those numbers against Eaton. 
And Hollingsworth has got to pull the ball in this situation. Broken bat looper over short. That'll drop for a hit. Two broken bats in as many innings. They throw to the wrong base. How about that? Hollingsworth hustles all the way into second. Well, this is not a real good defensive outfield. And that was a heads-up play by Hollingsworth. Ryan Klesko just lollipopped the ball back into the infield, and Hollingsworth saw that there was no way in the world they were going to be able to get him. He's hustling all the way. Klesko comes in leisurely, knowing that Alou's not going to try to score. And look at that throw. A little looper. And in the meantime, Hollingsworth runs the Cubs out of a double play situation. This is a real heads-up piece of base running. Big swing and a miss by Aramis Ramirez. So you're right. Partner, it keeps the double play out of order, and a base hit might score you two instead of one. Well, also another factor, it's so early in the game, you can't play them in in the infield. So if, if you have runners at first and third, you can play halfway looking for the double play. Now they have to play back. In the dirt, Hernandez smothers that. One ball, one strike. Eaton pitched an inning and a third against the Marlins. They roughed him up for six runs, six hits. And he hasn't won since April 13th. And that's his lone win of the year. When you have real big numbers against the pitcher, things like that happen. You shatter the bat, you don't pull it, you hit it the opposite way, it still turns into a base hit. Late strike two call. Aramis didn't like that. Remember, the Cubs had some problems with C.B. Buckner. In Chicago, remember the lineup card, Snafu. Well, I was kind of wondering how long it would take before one of the teams had some problems with the call of CB. That was almost on the ground. And when you're calling him at the ankles, you got to swing at the one at your shoulders because you might worry that one's going to get called too. One out. ninety six mile an hour fastball up and out of the strike zone and if you get ahead you can go up there nothing wrong with the arm of Eaton but he hasn't shown he can get the breaking ball over the plate yet and they're going to walk Patterson taking their chances with Michael Barrett who in especially the eighth spot has had a whole lot of RBIs this year so let's see if this strategy backfires on the Padres the Cubs hope it will as Patterson will be walked to load him up with one out in our second inning of play. San Diego playing to the double play here. They have turned the second highest number of double dips in the National League. 41 of them in total. And St. Louis has turned it over more. So Corey Patterson is passed intentionally and here's Michael Barrett four for his last 30. Bases full of Cubs. Alou at third Hollinsworth second Corey at first. And Michael Barrett a chance to plate the first run here. That one sweeps outside. Again, the breaking pitch not working for Eaton yet. Ramon Hernandez is pretty adept at blocking low pitches. This curveball sweeps away, brings the elbows in, blocks it nicely, and makes sure it doesn't get all that far away. He's had some problems throwing out base runners this year, but he calls a real good game. And he's familiarized himself with the Padre pitchers very quickly, and this is his first year here. And Michael, a good eye. That's the pitch that Eaton has made most use of, that shoulder-high fastball, and he was able to lay off. Ball two. Well, now is a real good opportunity to look just fastball. You see, after a 2-0 count, Barrett has been terrific. Get one middle in. Popped out of play. And into and out of the upper deck. Sergio Mitre would hit next. No score in our second inning. Alou leads off this frame with a double. Hollinsworth singles to left when Cresco Lolly popped the ball in. Todd took the extra base. Ramirez struck out. Patterson was intentionally walked.
two and two. Well, that one had real good movement as it moved well in on the hands of Barrett. Now you see how much he missed his spot. Hernandez wanted it low and away. That one sailed up and in. And a bad break. It could be a 3-1 count. No such luck, though. Michael has to protect two and two your count. Fly ball hammered. Left center field deep. Long is on the run. Still going at the track. He comes up with a great catch. Alou will tag and score. It's a sack fly. And Long saved a couple. What a grab by Long in center field. It's a huge deep sack fly that anywhere else would have been a slam. Well, we talked about the spacious alleys. It's 402. He caught it on the track. Terrence Long makes a terrific catch. He's not known as a great outfielder, but that was a great play. Not only that, but sliding, getting it back in the infield. That's the kind of play where you can score two runs on a sacrifice fly if the guy doesn't quickly get it back in. So RBI number 16, Barrett hit it as long as you could hit it and probably only this park turned it into a sacrifice instead of a grand slam. So Sergio Mitre has a one run lead. There are two outs with men at the corners. And two men out. Well despite the fact that Sergio only has one major league hit none this year he is going to be a pretty good hitter. That saved a run outside one ball one strike. His only hit coming against Greg Maddox. And he likely will not get another one against him for some time. Well, oh, the Padres have thrown some terrific defense at the Cubs in this series so far. Well, this, again, is not a real good defensive outfield. It's a real good defensive infield. That's downstairs, ball two. Well, CB hasn't given one call yet to eat. There's the man who made three brilliant plays last night. That big overhand curveball is absolutely the hardest pitch to call. That one evens it up. Why is that pitch so tough in your estimation? Well, because if it comes over the plate a strike, then it sweeps low and out of the zone by the time it gets to the catcher. If it comes over the plate high, by the time the catcher catches it, it's belt or thigh high, and the umpire doesn't want to call it. On the delay. Patterson's going to take second. Well, I think that's got to go as a wild pitch. I don't think that's going to go as a stolen base. That pitch was in the dirt. It rolled a little bit away from Hernandez. Watch it again. We haven't gotten a ruling yet, but it's in the dirt, and it does go as a wild pitch. Good call. No steal for Patterson, but it does take the force play out of the equation at second should Sergio make contact here. Three balls, two strikes, runners second and third now, two outs for the Cubs. Popped up back toward us. Back when you played two of the American League, the umpires umpired differently behind the plate and had different protective equipment as well. Well, when I started, they had the outside test protector. Then everybody went to the inside protector, but the American League was always known as high ball league, national low ball. Now they're major league umpires, so everybody umpires everywhere and the calls have gotten more uniform. 3-2. He just walked the pitcher to load him up. Mitre couldn't believe it. Well, I think what was so surprising was he hasn't thrown a curveball for a strike, and yet he keeps trying to throw curveballs over to Mitre. Then at 3-2, and two, he tries to throw that fastball in the outside corner. He missed with it. I mean, Hernandez tried to yank it back about eight inches over the outside corner, but CB's not going to fall for that. You look at Dave Magadan and Bruce Bochy not very happy as they send Darren Balsley to the mound. He's a pitching coach and a pretty good one. They're very happy with what he's done with his staff. But this is the one frustration with this team and Adam Eaton. He gets behind. He can't really spot his fastball. So he winds up with some big problems. And now you walk a pitcher who doesn't have a hit. And you deal with a guy who had six hits in the last two games. Eaton will go back to the windup as he faces Macias with the bags full of Cubs and two outs. Missing with ball one. Low and away. The heroics of Terrence Long and center have kept it a one-run Cub lead at this point. 
Seaton in the upper 30s with his pitch count. Fires again. A ground ball towards second. Loretta will fire on to first, and that'll do it. A sacrifice fly from Michael Barrett gives the Cubs the game's first run, but a great catch by Long kept it from being a much bigger inning. WGN News Monday. Think you've taught your child not to talk to strangers? Hey, did you guys see a dog come by here? Wait till you see what our cameras caught. We're shocked. We thought, oh, they're not going to do any. Away they all went. How to keep your child safe from stranger danger. Monday on WGN News at 9. WGN News Tuesday. Who makes sure the Great Lakes stay fresh? Tom Skilling sets sail to find out. On board the Lake Guardian. Tuesday on WGN News at 9. The SUVs with class-exclusive cooled front seats. Lincoln Navigator and Lincoln Aviator. Now, during the Lincoln Mercury SUV driveaway, you can add this to your comfort level. $4,500 cash back or 0% APR for 60 months, plus $1,000 for Cadillac owners and $500 Ford credit cash on select Lincoln Mercury SUVs. The SUV driveaway, only at your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Introducing the Pepsi Fridge Mate. It's like having a Pepsi machine right in your fridge. Just smaller. Pepsi. It's the cola. Refreshment from the supermarket shelf straight to your fridge. The Pepsi Fridge Mate 12-pack fits in your fridge. Hey Cubs fans, enjoy a drink with your friends before, during, or after the game at the Friendly Confines. Near the corner of Addison and Sheffield, the Friendly Confines offers easy access in and out of the game. Enjoy Cubs ambience inside or order from the grill and relax in the outdoor patio. Sunday on WGN. They battled down the stretch last year. Now it's a new season for a couple of old enemies. See them slug it out to the end of this big Southside series. Sox, Twins, Sunday at 2 on WGN. Beautiful San Diego. Our transportation back to the hotel, gliding in the waters next to Petco Park tonight. As Ryan Kluss go to work in the second inning. Mitre delivers a strike, and he leads one to nothing. Well, they're going to have to get Klesko untracked if this team is going to do anything. He had a ribcage problem earlier. That put him on the shelf for a while. That's a little inside, and the count evens up. And a ball and a strike. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous new ballpark. Very fan friendly, very close to the waterfront here in San Diego. Very pitcher friendly. Which I know you like a lot. Well, I'd like to see them move the fences back, but they're talking already about moving them in. High hopper off the plate. Pasco doesn't run real well. And Hollinsworth with the stretch takes care of him at first. One down. In our second inning. Looked to me like Lesko looked at that ball for a bit before he took off. Now he's not going to get too many infield hits. But that shows you how good the sinker of Mitre is tonight. Eventually you call a fair catch and make the play. And he had Lesko by a good step and a half. Now watch Ryan. He's looking at it all the way. You got to quit looking at it. You know it's in the infield. Just run as hard as you can if you're not looking. Right at first base into your target. It's got to slow you down a step. Might have cost him a base hit. Here's Terrence Long. They got him from Oakland for Mark Kotze. Long has a very long swing. They gave a pretty good player in Kotze. Who's not going to hit a whole lot of home runs, but he's probably going to hit in the 280s, the low 300s for Oakland. out of play foul and long still down nothing and two well, what a what a play he made to help get the Padres out of that inning without further damage if he doesn't get to it comes score three ground ball towards second see us to his right well, a little wide of the back but Hollinsworth able to snare that for the second out well you can tell chip on the ground ball that hits the grass first. This grass just eats it up. That ball, a lot of parks would have been a base hit and gotten into center field, but 
But C has had plenty of time to drift over in front of it and make the play. Yeah, it's Wrigley-esque. That's what the players will tell you. Very spongy, very slow. Dave Magadan told me last night that it's got to get to the dirt on the fly to have a real good shot at getting through this infield. That'll bring up Hernandez, the Padre catcher. Belt high strike has him behind in the count. Well, so far, Ramon hasn't started to hit. Last year, he hit 273 with 21 home runs for Oakland. So he's off to a relatively slow start with the bat. Little dribbler toward third. Aramis up and across in time, and Mitre Sinker is starting to sink. And he's sinking the Padres by a run after two. Leon, you're a star football player trying to play professional baseball. The question, why? Well, Chuck, the reason is simple. Like a lot of Americans, Leon struggles to make it financially. $20 million a year just doesn't go as far as it used to. It doesn't? Now, when you get four mansions, six SUVs, and 12 sports cars to support it, doesn't. Still, why play baseball? Because the post office wasn't taking applications. I told you, Chuck, cash. Well, my kid's going to love this. <laughs> That'll be $5. It's Toyota's nationwide sales drive at your Toyota dealer, featuring a crowd-pleasing car selection, outstanding quality, and amazing values, including the sporty Corolla. Now get this affordable car with 0% financing up to 48 months, or take $750 customer cash on the number one selling compact. And check out the cool Matrix, also with 0% financing. The race is on. Don't miss this event. Toyota's nationwide sales drive at your Toyota dealer now. But I have this feeling. Really? I love sports. You love sports. I do. You love basketball, hockey, baseball, football, golf. No, I don't. But you have Comcast Digital Cable. You have access to more sports than I could only dream of. Oh, well, I just got it for all the movie channels. I never, ever watch sports. It's on sale now, so you can get it, too. I'll call you. Comcast Digital Cable. Just $24.99 per month for three months. <laughs> call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. If a Cubs player hits a homer today, write down the distance and player's name and send it to WGN-TV. You could win two round-trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. Tonight on WGN News, a home health care worker is gunned down in his own apartment building. Police are looking for suspects and neighbors want answers. The story after the game. Cubs by a run looking for more as we head to our third inning now. The two, three, and four spots coming up for the Cubs. First man up, Ramon Martinez, who waves and misses at strike one. Ramon grounded out to Mark Loretta his first time. There's the breaking pitch. Well, usually the curveball will come to a pitcher a little bit later anyway. And that's the first one that he's gotten over for a real good strike. And three pitches takes care of Martinez. That's the third strikeout for Adam Eaton. Time to have a ball with the Illinois Lottery celebrating their 30th anniversary. And Steve, you could have used a winning lottery ticket if you were on the hook for the purchase price of Petco Park. Well, it did catch him, cost him a few bucks. The city, state, I think paid about $301 million. The Padres put in the rest. And it's turned out to be a beautiful ballpark. It's also rejuvenated the entire downtown area because this place was pretty run down. And now property is selling for a bundle in the neighborhood of this ballpark. And it went up very quickly. I mean, look at this video. One of the penthouses of that particular building went on the market for $2 million. And you do have a view inside Petco Park from the upper reaches there. Look how fast they built this place. I mean, it's unbelievable. Before you know it, they took it right from the drawings <laughs> to a completed ballpark, and that was it. And that bullseye Bermuda really grows quickly. Maybe it's because some of, some of that other bull stuff that we're <laughs> passing around was used in the construction. That was it. Sammy just as soon not see a high fastball here. He laid do, off. Do you see how far that Hernandez went outside that time? His almost entire body was out of the strike zone. He's got to go back to the high heat, I would assume. 
Two balls, two strikes. But he missed with. Eaton originally a Philadelphia Philly product. Number one draft choice. They thought he was going to be a star. Then he had the surgery that a whole lot of pitchers had. Three balls, two strikes. And Sammy down again. That's four for Eaton in two and two thirds innings. Bases are clear for Alu. He just heats them upstairs. And at 95 96, it's tough to catch up to it up there. Sammy got a piece of it, saw it stuck in the glove. And he took a seat. Moises has scored the game's only run. He had a cannon shot to left center field for a double. And then he came around on Michael Barrett's sacrifice fly. Big breaker, and it is starting to come to him. 0 oh 2 now. Well, that was a pretty good pitch, and again, this catches the corner, but by the time Hernandez gets it, it's off the plate. Swing and a drive, belt to deep toward left. That ball is gone. Alu hits a big bomb, and it's two to nothing. Well, that's an 0-2 fastball, and that's why there's a little frustration with Adam Eaton. He threw a slider away. He threw a curveball away. And then he gets real careless with a fastball to one of the hottest of all the Cub hitters. Moises now five for six in the series. And although he crushed this ball, it only went two rows deep. And Moises had a pretty good idea it was leaving the ballpark. So Alu with nine home runs, a two-run cup lead, and Allen's worth a ground ball to second. Eaton makes a big mistake on 0-2, and he trails by two in the middle of our third inning at Petco Park. Get it all. Zero for 60 plus 2,000 cash back and the best-selling sport utility in America. Only one introduced a fully independent rear suspension. Only one has so much to offer with available features like a free third row fold flat seat. Ford's adjustable brake and gas pedals and Ford's family entertainment system. Explorer is the one. Get it all with 0% financing for 60 months plus 2,000 cash back and Ford Explorer. Chicago's best-selling medium sport utility. Get it all. Technology works for some people. I'm not one of them. That's why I use Walgreens' new digital photo center. They have experts to help people like me. I can bring in any digital media, edit my photos, and print as many of the ones I like with a choice of sizes. And unlike the prints most people make at home, these prints cost less and last a lifetime. And it's easy, even for me. Sometimes the road to adventure is paved. The 245 horsepower all-wheel drive Nissan Murano. Forgot to warn him about that hot sauce. Khalil Green leads off the San Diego third, and he shoots that into shallow right field for the first Padre hit. Khalil Green yesterday, folks, if you missed it, had an Ozzie Smith-like defense tonight. Well, he showed great range to his left and right. Those are the throwback uniforms. You're not hallucinating back to 1984. But Green was catching everything in sight. Some kind of player, Khalil Green, the kid out of Clemson, who has made the jump from double A to the major leagues in two very quick seasons. Here's Eaton. Let's see what he can do with Sergio Mitre. Takes the ball low. 
to be honest with you, I'd rather see him butt. He's a real good hitter. In fact, they've used him as a pinch hitter. Even though those numbers aren't particularly good, this guy swings the bat well. One ball, no strikes to Adam Eaton. Little number. Mitre handles. He'll go to second. Close there. They got the man at second, but Eaton hustling down the line is not doubled up. Ramon hung in there with the base runner Green barreling in on second base. One out. Good sinker by Mitre, who's got that working real well. Ramon does a nifty job of getting the bag and getting away so that Green can't get a piece of him. He can't get quite enough on the throw, and so one out, one on. For Burroughs, who was denied by Aramas back in the San Diego first inning of play. Comes with a win tonight, guarantee themselves at least a 500 road trip. Then we're back home to take on the San Francisco Giants on Tuesday night. And they would also guarantee themselves not being any further out of first than when they left. They left the two games out of first. Right now they're a game and a half out of first. High hopper. Mitre gives way to Ramirez for a moment, then collides with it. It's going to be a base hit. And it was a real tough play. Normally, the third baseman will call off the pitcher. Sergio's a good fielder. He thought he could make this play. And lack of communication cost the Cubs a hit. He heard Aramis coming, but heard him too late. So two are on for the Padres with one out, and Mark Loretta walked on four pitches. He is the man up here in the San Diego third. Two nothing. Cubs have the lead. A Barrett sack fly and a long home run from Moises Alou. Fly ball hammered toward left. Two outs. But now you face Giles with two men on. That ball was hit right on the screws, and Moises was in good position and made the play. That's the first fly ball out from the Padres in this game. Here is Giles. Bounced into a force play in the first. And it's a balk. Mitre does indeed balk, so everybody moves up 90 feet. Sergio not sure what he did. They're calling balks a little closer these days. And now time called. Barrett wants to talk to Sergio here. He's telling him to be real careful with Giles. In this situation, you have a right-hander up next with Nevin. Even though Giles has not been real good with runners in scoring position early in the season, he was real tough on the Cubs wearing a pirate uniform. Giles, a lifetime 357 hitter against Cub pitching. There's a break. He tried to stop his swing. Could not. There's a tip for a strike. 0 and 1 your count. St. Louis won tonight. Right there. You start to go up into the stretch and then stop. That's going to get you a buck every time. Cardinals won tonight. Houston won tonight. And now Mitre wants a new set of signs here ahead of Giles. Strike one in the third inning. Hit. Eaton scores. Burrows around third as the ball bobbled in center by Corey Patterson. We're tied at two. I just believe in that situation. You just got to make Giles get himself out out of the strike zone. And if you do walk him, you take your chances with a right-hand hitter. 
Giles has been so tough against the Cubs, even though it's a good sinker. Left-handers love the ball down. Now, Sergio, over the course of this year, has been real tough on right-handers. But left-handers have given him some problems. In fact, that's the reason why Long is in the lineup instead of Peyton, because of the disparity between right and left-hand hitters against Mitre. So just like that, it's tied. And Phil Nevin comes to calling. He rolled out his first time up. 2-2 game, Padres with two runs here in this bottom half of the third. Well, that's 51 career runs batted in for Giles in 63 games against the Cubs. Sometimes you just have to bonds them. Well, nobody's been able to bonds bonds for the last couple days. He's been out with back spasms. Well, I think that was from watching so many intentional walks. He started to seize up. Big swing and a miss. Giants may keep him out of the lineup again tomorrow. And they say Barry may not play until Tuesday night in Chicago, if then. Uh, I think they should rest him the entire series. Hate to see a guy risk what's been a real good career by coming back too soon. No balls and a strike. Again. To first with that giant team coming to town. Wrigley Field will be packed again. And the Cubs encourage you to use public transportation coming to and from Wrigley Field. The CTA's red line stops at the Addison Street station. Having down to his last strike for night and weekend games. Fans who do choose to drive should take advantage of remote parking. A free shuttle bus is available at DeBry University. That's near Addison and Western. It's only $6. For more details, call the CTA hotline at 773-36-7000. Two-strike pitch to Nevin. He is off the plate. One and two. And remember that game Wednesday, which is listed on your tickets and on the schedule at 7 o'clock, is really a 6 o'clock game. They've changed the time. Get there at seven. You miss a couple innings. Runner goes and a swing and a miss. Nevin down on strikes. Padres get a couple of runs on a Brian Giles single up the middle. We're through three and we're tied 2-2. Two -two. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. The Cub battery talking over that sequence in the bottom of the third inning. Giles, the left-handed batter, was pitched to, and he rifles a single up the middle that ties the game. Ramirez loops that into right field. That'll drop in front of Giles. So another broken bat, another base hit. Ramirez aboard leading off the fourth inning before Corey Patterson hits. Let's pause for station identification. You're watching the home to 100 American and National League games all season long. Superstation WGN. The award-winning WGN News will follow us from San Diego tonight. Let's see if the Cubs can retake the lead. Corey was intentionally walked in the second. He unloaded on one and hit it over the wall at the 396 mark last night. It, however, was a little earlier in the game than it is now. Runner goes. The pitch inside. The throw to second is in plenty of time. I would assume that was a hit and run. I'm not sure you'd send Aramis on a straight steal. And if it was a hit and run, somehow you have to protect the base runner. Good throw by Hernandez. He got it there in plenty of time. The one waiting for Aramis to arrive. One ball, two strikes. off two and two now your count and 
Madison stays alive here in the fourth inning of play. Eaton is starting to get his curveball over the plate consistently. That's not a good sign for the Cub hitter. He's been tough against the Cubs lifetime. Two and one with a 360 earned run average. Rounded toward Nevin. Backhanded stab. He'll take the play himself. Two outs. Tony Muser, who's the Vince coach and was a major league first baseman, so working with Phil Nevin on footwork at first base. But he says because he's had so many shoulder problems from diving in the outfield, they don't want him to dive in the infield at all, which takes away one of the great weapons that we've seen from our standpoint, Derek Lee employed. Michael Barrett hit an absolute seed to left center field his first time up. Long tracked it down with the bases loaded. And that scored the game's first run. And now he's ahead in count. Ball two, two and oh. Sixteen RBIs for the Cub catcher. There's David Wells. He'll get the nod tomorrow for San Diego. Fly ball hammered to right field. That'll chase Giles back to the warning track, and he'll haul it in. Barrett's hit the ball right on the button twice. It is 0 for 1 with an RBI. This is a great pitcher's park, and a good pitcher's duel is underway here in the fourth. An all new Galant for just $2.39 a month for 36 months. And as always, get a 10 year warranty on a car you actually want to drive. Electric. Hurry, Mitsubishi's Triple Diamond Days end June 1st. Stoney, I like that look for you. It's a good look. I have enough to make <laughs> one of those. <laughs> one spike? One spike. Ryan Glesko leads off the San Diego fourth. Can't sit too close to that guy. It might poke out your eye. Roll it's foul. It's all fun and games until someone <laughs> gets an eye injury. That's exactly right. And the left looks a little like Ryan Glesko. Two strike pitch. It's high and tight. One ball, two strikes. I want to welcome our viewers watching us around the world on MLB.com tonight. Good ball game in a beautiful ballpark. And Pusco down on strikes. That's two for Mitre. One away. If you're on the road for business or pleasure, don't miss a minute of the action. Take your favorite team on the road and watch live games from your computer. Sign up for MLB.tv at Cubs.com. That's where baseball is always on. And we're informed by the ever vigilant Pete Toma that we're going to Singapore tonight. It's a long flight. I could also put you in for a caning if you like. Um, you gonna turn that down? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> no ball is two strikes. Any place where you can't throw throw your gum away, you get in big trouble. That's not a good. That's not a good place to go. It's supposed to be very pretty though, especially this time of year. Two strike pitch to long. That's tipped and got a big piece of air. Now going to Japan was about as far west or east as I want to go, quite frankly. I'm sorry to have missed that one. I would have loved to have been on the trains and the subways and not real congested there, is it? No, not at all. Fly ball left center field pretty deep. Ball slicing toward Moises. He can't get there. That'll bounce over the fence. 
for a rule book double. So Long in with his third two base hit of the year. And the Padres have the go ahead run in scoring position. The dimensions here are so big that you can hit the tar out of a ball and not get it out of the park. Moise has got a good jump, but couldn't get to it. And one hop out of the ballpark. So the left handers continue to do some damage. To Sergio Mitre, that's the reason Long is starting tonight. Chip, you'll be happy to know that big time insurance exec Jill Estep is looking on with a cast of thousands. Thousands, huh? Close to thousands. How close? Three. That's, that's closer <laughs> than none. <laughs> One ball, no strikes to the Padre catcher. And take a look at those numbers, and you'll see why they're trying to unload their bench with the left-handers against Mitre. 1 and 0 your count. That's in. To even it up. Hope our studio coordinator PJ Cruchel is feeling better. PJ had some back surgery. Watching our game tonight back in Chicago. Chris Schlidroth and his future wife Cindy Crawl are celebrating from Delwood, California here tonight. Gary and Adele Price are here from Nagani, Michigan. That's in the UP of Michigan. Upper Peninsula. Exactly. Very nice. Probably still snowing there. They're out here on a 20th anniversary trip. Two balls and a strike. It's even now two and two to Ramon Hernandez. We got out guessed because that breaking ball just floated right over the middle of the plate. Sergio pitching in front of family and friends and I'm sure he left more than a few passes from being just down the road in Chula Vista. Tickets have been tough to come by for this particular series. This was one of the quickest series to sell out for the Padres this year. They're going to draw over three million people here. Two two count is over but low. It's three and two now. Well, bear in mind that the Padres do have an extra added bat in the lineup because Eaton in the ninth spot's a pretty good hitter. He's been used as a pinch hitter twice, as a matter of fact. A little green waits on deck for the Padres. First the 3-2 pitch to the catcher. His line down the left field line. That's trouble if it's fair, but it's not. There's a break that didn't miss by much. Well, he broke his bat and doesn't have anything to show for it except a loud foul. Barrett going out to talk with Mitre. He makes a mistake with the breaking ball. That one hung on the inner portion. And Hernandez missed by about a foot. Cub fan exhibiting unusually bad hands, or he'd had a souvenir. You hardly see anybody down that line in the left field stands going after a baseball. It's remarkable how infrequently we've seen that this year. Ah, there's a young man with a souvenir. He is very happy. Another 3 2 pitch due to Hernandez here in a tie game at two. And he rolls that one toward Macias. Runner to third now, two outs for Khalil Green. Green, the rookie of the month for the month of April. He'll get that honor. Along with Brian Giles, who won a Player of the Week award in the first of this month. Those two awards will be handed out before tomorrow's series wrap up. Here Green in San Diego. Is, is becoming a huge favorite here. The fans just love him. You can understand why. Not only because of his numbers with runners in scoring position, but his defense. And his defense has been spectacular. We'll have to go a long way still to match the heroics of Ozzie Smith. But last night, as I said earlier, he looked like the wizard a couple of times with the glove at shortstop. Well, they thought so much of Ozzie that they traded him very early in his career. But at that point, Ozzie couldn't hit very well. 
They traded him for Gary Templeton. Who could hit, but and couldn't play like Ozzie. They both had very long careers. And Ozzie turned himself into a real good hitter with the Cardinals. The 2 0 -oh count is low and in. One pitch away from bringing Eaton up with two men on and two men out here. Well, that's the offspring of Mark Grant and Pete Toma, if I've ever seen one. Let me think about that for a minute. Ball four, first and third with two outs. Larry Rothschild coming out to talk with Sergio Mitre. And I'm sure he's going to tell him that despite the fact that Eaton just tapped back to him in the third, he's a pretty good hitter. Let's make sure he settles down the youngster. Now, this is the Cubs number five. But all of the starters have got to pick it up a little bit, knowing that Pryor is still a while away from coming back. And it's uncertain when Kerry Wood is going to come back. We assume that. Gary's starting to feel pretty good, and he will want to test that arm to check on soreness. No structural damage, and that's the good news. Monday, he's going to throw the baseball. Then they'll be better able to gauge when he'll be back and ready to make balloon hat. I'm still trying to figure out the, the progeny of the producer and the grandster. That's... It's got me a little shaken up here as Eaton digs in with two outs. First and third, tie game at two. And you're right, Kerry Wood's scheduled to throw Monday back in Chicago. And uh, if all goes well, he might be ready by next weekend when, of course, St. Louis comes to town. This one right off the mask. And that's why the shape of that mask is like the hockey goalies it kind of helps so you don't get the full force of those foul tips but that can give you whiplash pretty easily one strike pitch and that thing a long bounce boy it's a heck of a play by Michael Barrett well he's getting better and better at that the the difficulty of that play is you have a tendency to overreact and move yourself out of position that time knowing that it was bouncing in front of the plate Michael just stayed there and had that ball just drop at his feet. Anthony's a dandy pitch. One and two here in the fourth inning. In the fifth, Mitre, Macias, and Martinez are due for the Cubs. Let's see if Sergio can make a real good offering here with two on, two out. He did over the outside corner and he will not argue. Padre strand a couple. We're through four tied to two. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by your local Ford store. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Get it all. Zero for 60 plus 2,000 cash back and Ford's most versatile minivan ever with more than 100 innovations. Only one minivan has a flip fold third row bench. Only one minivan has so much to offer with Ford's available safety canopy system, Ford's adjustable brake and gas pedals, and Ford's family entertainment system. Freestar is the one. Get it all with 0% financing for 60 months plus 2,000 cash back and an all new Ford Freestar. Get it all. Hey, Frankie. Bernie. I see you got a new lottery machine, huh? No, this is from 1974. No, I thought I'd show it off for the 30th anniversary. Man, let me check it out. Wow. One more time. Yeah. Wow. Guess some things never go out of style. Wow. Expect the unexpected. The Illinois Lottery. Have a ball. Sonata with America's best warranty. It's more car for the money. And now, 
The Sonata is J.D. Power & Associates' highest-ranked entry midsize car in initial quality. A mirror reflection of their dark side. Nice knuckles, Raph. No, Tiffany's. The two-hour season finale of Charm, Sunday night at 7 on WGN. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Sergio Mitre leads off the fifth. I think our director is tormenting us with shots of the fryer. <laughs> Skip Fillmore Ellison. Oh, he's a good looking guy. From Skip with the fryer. Oh, good breaking ball. Nothing in two. Sergio was able to lay off to keep the at-bat alive here. He knows that he got a break from Eric Cooper, so he gets to see at least one more pitch. Blowing away with a live fastball. He's got a real good arm. Well, he walked Mitre in the second inning to load him up and was fortunate to get out after giving up just one run when Macias grounded out. That's toward third. Burrows to his left. Out of time. And Sergio is out number one. Well, Burrows is going to be a real good third baseman, but at this stage of his career, he's a little uncertain with the throws. And he's made six errors this year. But no problems with that chance here in the fifth inning. And that'll bring up Macias. Let's see if Jose can hit the ball somewhere besides second. Loretta's taken care of him twice here tonight. In a night with the Astros in the win column. Houston beat them at 7-4 tonight. Andy Pettit. Another victory for the Astros. And Macias lays down a punt, and it's beautiful. Long throw to first and a bad decision. That'll go in the seats. That'll be a bunt single. And the air will move Macias into second base. We haven't seen the Cubs bunt much this year, but Macias laid it down absolutely perfectly. Eaton went down and made a bare hand pickup. You never get a real good grip on the ball, and he just fired it. And one of the concerns, to be honest with you, of Phil Nevin. In a moment of candor, he said one of the things that he worries about is somebody bumping into him and taking that shoulder out of joint again. So he's not going to be stretching into the runner for any throws. One ball, no strikes to Ramon Martinez. He's grounded out and he has struck out. They want him to make all the plays he's supposed to, but as you said, they can't lose it. That's queued up the middle. Eaton knocks it down. Got a face burger too, I think. And takes care of Martinez for the second out. One seemed to roll up his arm, and then he never looked at Macias at second. And watch it again. This one came off with a whole lot of spin. And just under the chin. Well, you know, Eaton really wants to get Sammy here for he doesn't want to face Alou with men aboard because Alou has absolutely crushed him twice. Sammy was caught looking in the first, struck out swinging in the third. It's been the high fastball from Eaton that has been the bait. Off the plate, ball one. And Sammy's hoping that Eaton decides to roll a curveball up there or gets that fastball down where he can handle it. That's downstairs, ball two. And I'm pretty sure what's on the mind of Eaton is, okay, I can't walk this guy because I don't want to get to a Lou. And before you know it, he's down 2-0. and oh With Sammy just looking fastball. Popped up. Down the left field line. Cusco, long run. Burrows and Khalil Green. It's Green, and he can't make the play. That's got to go as an error. I know that was a difficult play, but he set up. That was a towering 
fly ball and he gets a no play I think that's a break and I think the Cubs get a break you got to make this catch as long as you have time to set up you know the ball is going to rotate back toward the field to play this one is just misjudged it's as easy as that so Green gets a break no error charge little hometown scoring and Sammy gets a break absolutely a swing on the house here and a two ball one strike count with Macias still at second there's a drive oh you talk about paying off way out of here second level into the Western Metal Supply Company building oh baby what a rope when you take a look at where this pitch is you'll know that for Sammy that was a sweet spot tormented by the high fastball all night you open the door in this league you get a break and you get another swing and Sammy made the most of it watch where the fastball is it's just above the knee and Sosa hit it a mile so the Cubs are back in front Sammy in double digits and home runs and that thing left a vapor trail getting out of here in a big time hurry he passes Mike Schmidt up next Reggie Jackson on the home run to four. And good teams take advantage of the opposition's mistakes. As good as Khalil Green was last night and as good as he's been so far in this one. He enabled the Cubs to get a two run lead by giving Sammy another swing. And Eaton missed his spot by plenty, got the fastball down, and it cost him a two run homer. So the crowd still buzzing as Sosa's hit two home runs in as many games here at San Diego. He has tormented Padre pitching for a long, long time. Well, they love to hit in Qualcomm. We didn't really know how he'd like to hit here, but apparently, he and Moises Alou like it real well. Comes for Padres two in the fifth inning of play tonight. There's another shot into the outfield. Moises Alou is three for three. He's six out of seven in the series. Needs the triple for the cycle. Let's watch the distance on Sammy's home run. He couldn't have ordered it any better than that. Let's go. Doesn't even move. The only question is how far will it go? It went back there pretty well. So the runner aboard Todd Hollinsworth the hitter he is singled he's grounded out hitting a cool 344 yeah. that one fouled at the plate nothing and two Hollinsworth a very versatile player we know what he can do off the bench he can play all three outfield spots for you and as he is tonight can play a good first base as well. His numbers against Eaton dictated that he would be in the starting lineup. He's responded one for two. Keeps the bat alive at 0 and 2. Padres overall have had pretty good pitching. Their bullpen has been spectacular. The starting rotation has been okay. Grezelanic. Anxious to get back. Todd laid off the inside corner. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, Grunzelanek nursing that Achilles problem. Todd Walker for the Cubs has a sore shoulder. He is able to pinch hit, is Todd tonight if needed late. But still not 100% defensively. The one two count is ripped into right field. That almost picked off Alou. Moises will put on the brakes as Giles hustles it back in. So Holland's worth a couple of hits. I assume the bullpen would start to work as Eaton is starting to get hit real hard. And remember, this inning started off with a bunt. After Mitre grounded out, 
Macias bunted. Eaton threw it away. A pop up that wasn't made. And Sosa hit a two run homer and the bullpen up and going. Jay Watasek is up. As the middle of the order for the Cubs is really teeing off. Sosa, Alou, and Hollinsworth tonight are a combined six for nine with a couple of home runs and three of the four driven in. Padres came into tonight number two in the league in pitching. The Cubs number three. Their candidate for comeback player of the year Trevor Hoffman is off to a great start as a closer. Cubs are hoping he'll be a non-factor. And uh, Rod Beck's going to come back apparently sometime next week for San Diego. Well he'll be eligible but they don't really believe that he'll come right to the major league. He needs some competition. Rod left the Padres team for personal reasons after a terrific job late when Hoffman went down with the shoulder problems. He went 20 for 20 in save situations. One ball, no strikes, two Ramirez. Two on for the Cubs, and there's another high drive deep toward left. Quest go back. He's at the track. He's at the wall. He says goodbye. A three-run homer for Ramirez, and the Cubs break it wide open. That's home run number 100 as Ramirez has driven in 30. He leads the team in that department. Always talks about bearing down a little bit harder with runners in scoring position. He got a curveball that kind of rolled up there as Eaton is losing his stuff. Aramis know it was gone. And even the big ballpark can't contain the Cubs tonight. Cubs have come in here and hit five home runs in two games. The Padres in 20 games have hit 10 in this place. Slow roller. Eaton to the bag and eyelash ahead of Corey Patterson. And that's going to do it. A huge five run fifth for the Cubs. Ramirez and Sosa drive in the runs to give the Cubs a 7 2 lead. Very nice. Like all light beers, it's low in carbs. Unlike any other light beer, it's got the great taste of Bud Light. What we have here is a failure to compromise. Fresh, smooth, real. It's all here. The SUVs with class-exclusive cooled front seats. Lincoln Navigator and Lincoln Aviator. Now, during the Lincoln Mercury SUV drive away, you can add this to your comfort level. $4,500 cash back or 0% APR for 60 months, plus $1,000 for Cadillac owners and $500 Ford credit cash on select Lincoln Mercury SUVs. The SUV drive away, only at your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Imaginations to life. Introducing the fan only at Comcast.net. A revolutionary new way to watch your favorite videos online. It's easy. Just click and start them instantly. Now with Comcast High Speed Internet. accommodations with you. A skipper splitter shows the two home run hitters for the Cubs in the fifth inning. And now Sergio Mitre with a big five run lead in a very big ballpark goes to work against the top of the Padre order. Just want to make sure that you don't walk anybody and Sergio's Walked a couple tonight, but he's had a good sinker. That one back toward us and out of play. 
whenever you can get wins out of the number five spot in your pitching rotation, you're doing all right. And the last time Sergio pitched, although he didn't get a decision, and although he gave up ten hits, the Cubs won that game. Burroughs again has to protect the plate. Hey, nice catch. Love those fans with the cell phones. One ball, two strikes. Rolled to the right side. Hollinsworth snares. Petre has to hurry. Gets there just ahead of Burroughs. Might have stepped on the bag awkwardly. Four out, number one. Well, Sergio's a pretty good athlete, and he knows that he's got to get over there. This ball slowly hit, and he does. He beats Burroughs to the bag. Good toss by Hollinsworth. And gets there a step ahead of the charging Burroughs. Your key came into play in the second in the third inning I should say with the Padres. Giles got to hit with some men aboard and he came through with a two run scoring single that accounts for all of the Padres offense. So you want to get this guy here. Mark Loretta 0 for 1 with a walk. Well, last night every time they faced Giles nobody was on base. And that's a real good way to face him. He made the last out three times and the second out in the ninth in a one two three ninth. Joe Borowski probably threw the ball as well as he's thrown it all year. He had real good stuff in the ninth inning last night. Yeah, Dusty told us after the game the big key was strike one. Joe was able to get ahead of the hitters. Well, he was aggressive and I think he had confidence in his stuff. He felt pretty good. I felt good about the fact that Dusty brought him back after a real tough performance in Los Angeles. And that's why players around the league rave about Dusty Baker's leadership skills. If you're on his team, you're on his team, not in his doghouse after a bad performance. Well, Joe Borowski is the closer of this team, and I think Dusty, by getting him up, let him know that. Petre nearly knocked down. Martinez behind the bag. Hollinsworth able to hold the bag. How about that play? Well, Loretta's retired for out number two. Sergio thought he should have made that play. And it might have might have slowed it down. It might have went off his foot. We'll take a look again. Let's see if it. No, I guess he missed it. And he's wondering how he missed it. And he's wondering too, I'm sure, how Ramon was able to throw out Loretta. Two down, base is clear for Giles. We'll watch it again and See if Hollinsworth keeps his foot on the bag. It's close at first. Little flare. Left field. Moises is going to play it safely. Giles a blue pit. He's two for three. And that's something that the Padres are going to see a lot of, although they're not going to hit as many home runs as they hit before. Because of the spacious dimensions, you're going to see a lot of loopers in this park. The outfielders have to take away doubles and triples so you have to play a little deeper and Giles a perfectionist was looking at the video replay board and when he saw how he hit that ball he just shook his head and said that is so bad he wasn't real happy with the swing but is happy with the results and now here's Nevin who has really been mesmerized by Sergio Mitre tonight he hasn't had many good cuts at all well, if you can keep it like that Cubs will retain this five run lead which in this park is pretty comfortable lead. Ball two to Phil Nevin. You don't want to walk Nevin to get to Klesko because the problem Sergio's had with the left hand hitters even though Klesko is just not the same guy at this point with just one home run. All three, three and oh, your count. Well, some Bruce Bochy, I got to give Nevin the 3 0 green light because he has been struggling somewhat. You know, you're going to see a fastball, and this guy has tremendous power. Here comes the 3 0 pitch, and on four straight, Nevin's aboard for Ryan Klesko. Giles to second, and with one swing, it could get real interesting. And Larry Rothschild again is out for a quick visit with Sergio Mitre who has to work through this fifth inning to qualify 
for his second win. As Larry trots to the mound, we'll step aside and tell you what's coming up on WGN. It's a showdown between good and evil when Phoebe and Paige travel to a parallel universe. It's a charmed two-hour season finale event. Sunday night at 7 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Back at Petco Park, huge crowd, sellout crowd, they think tonight. Same tomorrow in the series wrap-up and road trip wrap-up for the Cubs. We'll head home to take on the Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals. Padres will embark on a very long road trip. Their longest of the year. I would think that Larry Rothschild told Sergio to try to stay away, make him hit the ball the opposite way. In his wheelhouse, he rolls the first pitch to second, and Mitre qualifies for a second win here in his hometown of San Diego. Nothing doing for the Padres. They're down five after five. At GMC, we know that payloads don't need to stretch their legs. Listen to XM satellite radio, enjoy dual climate control, or watch DVDs. But people do. Introducing the new GMC Sierra 1500 Crew Cab. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. Hi, I'm checking in. Hi, checking in. Checking in. Hi. Good morning, sir. Checking in. At Hotels.com, we check out a wide range of hotels, so you get the best price and exactly what you want in a hotel. Hotels.com. Best prices, best places, guaranteed. Don't buy another car before you check out the Hyundai Elantra. The Elantra costs $1,600 less than a Honda Civic LX when comparably equipped. Yet it's loaded with standard features like air conditioning and power everything. Not to mention standard front side impact airbags for added safety. And quality that lets Hyundai offer America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. The Hyundai Elantra starting at just 11839 With Hyundai, you win. Get a 2004 Elantra with 2,000 cash back or 0% APR. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by Hyundai. When your car comes home with America's best warranty, you win. Hyundai. Walgreens, pharmacy of the Chicago Cubs. And by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. Get you a... Uh... Chip Carey, Steve Stone back at Petco Park in San Diego. And Steve, the Cubs have come to town and they've played long ball in this supposedly pitcher-friendly park. In two games, the Cubs with five home runs. In 20 games, the Padres have a total of 10 as a team. Well, there's a big difference. The Cubs have right-handed power, and everything we've seen shoot out of this ballpark has been to left and left center field. Corey Patterson hit one to center. We haven't seen anybody hit one right of center field. And the Padres have some left-handers who are having some problems with a power outage here. And they're having trouble with Sergio Mitre, who's worked five innings and qualifies for the win. And so the Padres down 7-2. Go to their bullpen. Jay Watasek is on to pitch. And he'll face Barrett, Mitre, and then the top of the Cub order here in game two of this series. A roller hit toward third. Burrows takes the big hop and makes a fine play. One up, one man down here in the sixth inning. Andre Penn, as Steve alluded earlier, has been absolutely terrific for them. Well, you look at some of the numbers. Jay Watasek is a great example of that. His ERA at 220 on for the 13th time. Otsuka, the Japanese relief pitcher, has come in. He has a one-point ERA. Linebrink, 127, and Hoffman, 138. But where they've had some problems is the starting rotation. Eaton probably in line to lose his fourth. He's only won one. Brian Lawrence has been very good by and large. Jake Peavy's got a chance to be exceptional. His ERA just over two. And with Wells, this has got a chance to be a decent starting rotation. We saw Ismael Valdez last night throw the ball very well, but he was tagged with the loss as Maddox was unhittable. 
Eaton's line tonight, five innings, nine hits, seven runs earned, two walks, one of them intentional, four strikeouts, and three home runs. Mitre spins away from that pitch from Watasek. Look out. When they go get you, it's not going to be with that spinning breaking ball. Here comes the 2 2 with the bases clear for Sergio. And he swings right through it and is down on strikes. Two up, two down in the sixth. Top of the order now. Jose Macias will be the hitter. And Houston beat the Mets 7 4 tonight. Atlanta over Milwaukee. But they lose Marcus Giles, a horrific collision in the first inning with Andrew Jones. They lose him for two months with a broken collarbone. The Reds are playing in Los Angeles. They're beating the Dodgers two to nothing. That one in the seventh inning. Todd Van Poppel pitching for Cincinnati tonight. Another hit for Macias. He launches that one foul and out of play. Pirates beat the Giants 6-4. No Barry Bonds. Jason Kendall had three RBIs. Bonds out with back spasms. Might not play till the Giants come to Chicago Tuesday night. Another foul ball from Macias. Cardinals beat the Marlins 4-0. Chris Carpenter now 4-1. Cardinals starting pitching has been surprisingly good the first two months of the season. Well, they were real happy with the stuff of Chris Carpenter coming back after pretty much the loss of close to two years. And they felt that he could be a real productive member of that starting rotation along with Woody Williams led by Matt Morris. I think it's starting pitching that offense just about as good as anybody. The Cubs right now tied for the league lead in home runs with the Colorado Rockies. Nothing in two is your count. That's off the plate. Another reason the Cubs have been so successful is they have scored a ton of runs this year with two outs. They came in with 63 two out runs. Six of their seven tonight have been scored with two men out. Boy that breaks the back of the opposition. Well the biggest play of the night was a play that wasn't made and as good as Khalil Green has been in this series when you give a team with the Thunder the Cubs have one more out in an inning the good teams take advantage of that that's exactly what Sammy and the rest of them did good at bat by Macias and two triples for Macias last night can you name the last Cub that did that two triples in a game. Herman fan zone. Yeah, a little later than that. Cap Anson. Oh, later. Later. Not early. Later. Brian Sandberg. Later still. Oh. The uh, twin towers of production. Mark Brady and Pete Thomas and Lance Johnson and Corey Patterson. Long wrong. Michael Tucker. Did it for the Cubs in 2001. Uh, but he didn't do it from both sides of the plate. And that's a pretty good trick. Now, answer that one. When was the last time a switch hitter did that from both sides of the plate? How about this at bat from Macias? It's Alex Cora like. Folks, if you missed well, not that. Not quite yet, but it's getting. If you, if you missed that at Dodger Stadium, he had an 18 pitch at bat and fouled off 14 in a row. Before he hit a two run home run against Matt Clement. <laughs> Call third strike. Watasek has a one, two, three, sixth. Cubs maintain the lead though. Seven to your score at Petco. Maybe this isn't the best time to say it, but. Uh... I think you're really beautiful. Well, I, I've always been attracted to you too, Paul. Wait, hold on one sec, babe. I, excuse me. Want to get away? Now you can. 
fly Southwest Airlines nonstop from Chicago Midway to Manchester or Providence for just $79 each way. You are now free to move about the country. from Honda, when it's IntelliChoice's best overall value for 2004, and one of car and driver's 2004 10 best picks again. And now for $1.99 a month? Question answered. Now you can lease an Accord LX for $1.99 a month for 36 months. Terrence Long leads off the San Diego sixth, and he bounces that ball to Todd Hollinsworth. Another ground ball from Sergio Mitre. That sinker ball has been outstanding tonight. In fact, Mitre has given up just one flyout in this game so far. One away in the sixth inning. Let's check out our Cubs high definition schedule brought to you by our friends at Grant's Appliances, Electronics, and more. The White Sox have two of the next three high definition games for our Chicago land audience only on WGN. Of course, the Cardinals in over the weekend, Friday, May 21st, at 2 o'clock. That game also from Wrigley Field. A beautiful high definition Dolby digital audio. 5.1, by the way. How do they much clearer than four nine? Well, how do they know to it's call it five? I don't understand how that works. Well, it's the height of the Dolby. Was Thomas Dolby that high? Exactly right. Why possibly? Here's Hernandez. He's 0 for two. Hernandez hitting much better on the road than he is here in spacious Petco Park. There's no sweeter sound in sports than heading to an enemy ballpark and hearing the home crowd silenced. And that's what the Cubs have done so far tonight. And they'll make some noise now as that ball's going to rock it very quickly into the second deck of the Western Metal Supply Company building. That was a no-doubt bomb. It's 7-3 now. Third homer, 18th driven in. Pretty good total of runs driven in for Hernandez. He showed that kind of power last year with Oakland. He gets a sinker at the inner portion and unloads on it. As we said at the start of our telecast, if you hit it straight down either line, you've got a pretty good shot to do some damage. And so here's Khalil Green, went from the hero last night, to the man wearing the goat horns this evening. The play that should have been made wasn't. And Sammy Sosa, he hit a long home run, and the Cubs pounded away after that as well. 7-3, though, here in the sixth. And the Padres will go to the bench and the bullpen. Fantastic do up next. Kerry <laughs> Robinson, the former Cardinal. Robinson's the guy that hit two, I think, the only triple play in Major League Baseball this year. That was against uh, Juan Cruz, a 5 4 3 around the horn triple play. And in Puffer. 
It was in the game last night. But see, that's why the Cardinals got rid of him, because of his propensity to ground into triple play. He does it a lot, too. Exactly once. <laughs> Three and two. Roll toward third. Maris will have good luck. And Green is retired. Four out number two. And indeed, Robinson. Well, now Robinson will be called back. Tasik will swing the bat himself here for San Diego. Tasik 0 for 1 this year. Bruce Bochy not wanting to go any deeper in the bullpen. Let's what Tasik get for himself. And he hits it in the air into shallow right center field. Good jump by Corey Patterson. And uh, despite the solo home run, Mitre's through six innings with a big lead. 7 3 your score. All on WGN is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Time for our Budweiser Game Time Fan Camp. Jane's Addiction with the musical accompaniment. Thomas Ramirez can relate to that song and that song's title for he has been caught stealing tonight. It's also hit a three run homer and the Cubs have a 7-3 seven, seventh inning lead with the two three and four hitters coming up and the bullpen for the Cubs up and going. That one hammered into center field and that'll drop. Good start to the seventh inning. Ramon Martinez won for four now. And it is Kent Berker up and throwing. Glendon Rush, by the way, gets the starting assignment against David Wells tomorrow. The middle of the order tonight has been spectacular against some pretty decent pitching. Madres came in number two in the National League. And Sammy with a huge home run in the fifth. Backs away from a breaking ball. Nothing in one to count from Watasek. Ten homers, 24 driven in for the Cup right fielder. We'd love to see him mark another one. count I had a way ball two to Sosa seven runs ten more hits for the Cubs they tallied 36 hits in their last two and a half games three six and one for the Padres a rocket into center field long will play that on a hop Two are on with nobody out. And here's Alu needing the triple for the cycle. And if you can get that in any park, it'll be this one. Lou with a double in the second. Solo home run in the third. And a base hit in the fifth. And he scored each and every time. thought he hit that one a mile. He hits that one into shallow right field. That's going to drop. Giles will fire to second late. And the Cubs with three straight seventh inning hits have them loaded with nobody out. But to tell you how this ballpark gobbles up fly balls, that home run Moises hit landed in the first row of seats in left field. Four for four tonight. And seven for eight in the series. 
They got him out the first at bat on a line drive to center field in the second inning last night. And that was the last time they got him out. Here's Hollinsworth. He's got a couple of hits. And that's hit out of play. And the Cub fans, and there are many tonight, yelling, let's go Cubs. The Padre fans, of course, booing them mightily. It's kind of like when we were at the old ballpark, you'd see the Marines in one section, you'd see the naval guys in the other section, the Army guys off to your right, and they try to shot each other down. Of course, San Diego, a, a great military town, wonderful support from our armed forces. And the Padres, as do we all, salute the fine men and women of our military for all they're doing for us. Nothing in two the count. With the bags full for Hollinsworth. 7-3 Cubs lead. Broken back. Line drive to Green, and they'll double off. Martinez at third. Two outs. Unfortunately, the Cubs have a big lead because this is not a splendid piece of base running. This is a soft liner, and it was right at Green. And Ramon just got caught well off the bag or Khalil Green it was an easy double play. Forty two thousand sixty four the crowd. And the Padres have gone over three quarters of a million in attendance already. Fastest they've ever done that. Fly ball to right. Giles into the cup. Bullpen hauls it in. What looked very promising turned out very badly. Middle of the seventh inning after loading him up with nobody out. The Cubs fail to add some insurance but lead it 7-3. It's 7 3. Cubs have the lead. Bottom of the seventh inning. Let's quickly pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station. WGN TV, Chicago. Ket Merker on to pitch. And he'll face Burroughs, Loretta, and Giles. The WGN News will follow us. Hopefully, the Cubs can seal the deal and take two straight from the Padres here at Petco. Merker on for the 19th time, the ERA, two and a quarter. And where Kent would like to improve his fortunes is in situations like this, getting out left-handed batters. Derek Lee has checked in defensively. He'll bat ninth in the flip-flop batting order for the Cubs. Way upstairs. Lefty's hitting 350 against Kent. Right-handed batters. 0.87. It can't be much overall. It's 2.09. I pop out of play. And Burroughs stays alive. One and two. Farns well, Farnsworth continues to loosen in the pen, so if Kent gets in any trouble, he'll come in. Reds have added to their lead in Los Angeles. Ken Griffey Jr. has just hit a home run. It's 4 nothing behind Todd Van Poppel, who's gone six scoreless innings. Line drive on one hop, and it's all late at short. Martinez can't corral it. And Burroughs is aboard here in the seventh, and I think they've ruled that a hit. They're going to give him a base hit. This one hit at Martinez, but hit awfully hard. A one hopper, picks up some spin, and spins into center field. So the left handers continue to give Merker some problems. Here's Loretta. Mark has walked, has lined out, and grounded out. Sergio Mitre, six innings tonight, only two outs recorded in the air. Pretty good outing. He gave up the long home run. He had some problems in the third, got out of it, and he's in line to get a win. It will be his second of his brief major league career and would even his record at two and two. Through there from Merck. 0 and 2 is your count. 
You see the disparity there. The left-handers really giving him some problems. And he's gotten out most every right-hander. One ball, two strikes. Two and two with Giles lurking next. Six hits in six innings for Sergio Mitre. And now Merker will try to shut the door in the seventh. And you figure Farnsworth the eighth. And then we'll see from there. The 2-2. Two -two. It is out of play. Foul off the bat of Mark Loretta. The San Diego team came into tonight's action right behind the Cubs offensively. Where the big difference is is in home run. They're last in the league with just 22. Fly ball hit to right. Toward the line goes Sammy. He makes the grab. And down is Loretta. Back to first goes Burroughs. Now Giles hits. He's two out of three with a couple of runs batted in. Giles has always hit Merker well. Double play ground ball would be nice. He's three for eight against him lifetime. That's over the outside edge for a strike. Hope to find general manager of the Cubs. Jim Hendry's enjoying the game tonight. He's down on the farm in Iowa. Checking out the kids at AAA. John McDonough promised me he'd stay up for this. Getting one ball, one strike. Awfully late back in Chicago. Well, you know the milk is warming as we speak. Showing you good reflexes. He turns away from that one. Right down the middle. It's one and two. A win again tonight for the Cubs. Guarantees... At least a 500 trip and guarantees at least they come home in the same position as when they left. And against the Dodgers and Padres, who've been playing great baseball, this has been a wonderful trip so far. Wide to left. That'll be easy and is. Giles retired. Back to first goes Burroughs. Now with two outs and Phil Nevin, the hitter. Had a chance during the first two days of this series to chat with a couple of great baseball friends Davey Garcia former major league manager and Dave Winfield Hall of Famer who works with the Padres front office and Dusty Baker after a quick chat with Kent Merker will say son nice job and on the back Merker gives up a hit nothing else and Phil Nevin will face the Farns in the seventh inning here with the Cubs in front 7-3 your score. Join Dan Rohn Sunday night for instant replay. He'll have Cubs and White Sox highlights, a look at the record number of high schoolers in next month's NBA draft, and a profile of the boxing banker, up-and-coming heavyweight Calvin Brock, Sunday night at 940 on instant replay here on WGN. Nevin has actually had better luck against Kyle Farnsworth than he has against Kent Merker, but the Farns comes in to face him. One on, two out. Comes trying to get out of this seven. Nevin 0 for 2 with a walk. A little bit low from Kyle. One ball, no strikes. Up seven, pot raise three. Farnsworth on for the 18th time, and Nevin has pretty impressive numbers against him. Two balls, no strikes. Our radar gun says 102. Their radar gun, which you can't trust because it's an enemy radar. Says radar. 45. Uh, not quite that. 98. 2 0 count. Come on, Kyle. 
Three and oh. Kyle someday would like to close if he wants to do that. Can't issue late inning walks. And you have to get the first batter you face. That went in at the knees. Good pitch that time. Three balls and a strike. Does walk. Phil Nevin. Two on, two out. And now he'll have to face the left hander, Ryan Klesko. Well, Klesko has never had much luck against Farnsworth. And Dusty is hoping that that continues. So now with a man at second, Michael Barrett goes out to have a word with Farnsworth on what set of signs they want to use. Terrence Long in the on deck circle. Let's go 0 for 3. That'll make you a little nervous in the batter's box. 96 and moving toward the kneecaps. One ball, no strikes. Umpires in the crowd didn't think much of that call, but Kyle evens it up. It's a tremendous lead out at second base by Burroughs, but he's not the guy that's going to hurt Kyle. Lesko could make it a one run game. And again, it's 322 feet to right. That's powered right through there, and that thing was humming. 99 on the board. I think that only goes to 99. Because this is as good a fastball as we've seen all year. That exploded in the glove of Barrett. One ball, two strikes with two on for San Diego. think Ryan seeing the ball particularly well. well it's a situation where you don't want him to pull it just keep the ball away and let him hit it to left center if he does make contact he does pull it into right center field nobody can get there that'll drop safely Burroughs scores they will stop Nevin at third a blue hit for Clasco makes it a 7-4 game and the tying run potentially comes to the plate Dusty Baker a big sigh Nevin and Plesko reach against Farnsworth. RBI number 17. And that's not the spot you want to throw Plesko. Middle in, although he doesn't hit it real well, you're going to see a lot of blue pits in his ballpark. And they narrow the lead to three. And that'll bring up Long, who doubled in the fourth inning and was stranded. San Diego has left six on base. They are within three now. Over the outside corner, strike one. Well, this is Long's first look at Kyle Farnsworth. And he has yet to get a base hit this year with two outs and a runner in scoring position. One ball, one strike. Burroughs led off the inning with a single. Loretta and Giles fly it out. Dusty went to the pen. Barnesworth walked Nevin. Plesko with two strikes. Blooped the single into right center field to score the fourth Padre run. That's lined right back to the mound. 
Wow. Right place, right time. If Kyle doesn't spear that, a run is in, and the Padres have big, big offensive potential. Instead, one is in, and that's it. 7-4, your score, going to the eighth. Tuesday on WCIU, every school is a quick, convenient way to get you to the game. Take the train or bus, and the CTA takes you right to the gates of Wrigley Field. And remember, if you do drive, come early, enjoy batting practice, and take advantage of the early bird discount. Kyle Farnsworth gives up a rocket, but the glove in the right place at the right time. You just have to hope that it's hit to your glove side, because if it's hit to the other side, you have no chance. And fortunately, Kyle and the Cubs get out of the inning with only a run. So it's 7-4 now heading to the eighth. Patterson, Barrett, and Derek Lee are coming up against Matasic. Well, he was real lucky to get out of that seventh inning without giving up a bundle. Boy, you hope that doesn't come back to haunt you. That's in for a strike. One and one your count. And that seventh inning, the Cubs had three on, three straight singles, nobody out. Line drive, double play, and a fly out into the scoring threat. up back toward us well, that was pretty close it landed hey a guy right in front of us made the grab on a hop there you nice go catch very nicely done that's one and a quarter on camera that's exactly right Patterson down on strikes Cardinals come to town Friday, May 21st at 220. There'll be a lot of on-cameras in that game. And make sure you arrive early at Wrigley. If you're one of the first 10,000 adults, 21 and older, you'll get a beautiful Cubs floppy hat compliments of Anheuser-Busch. One away in the Cubs eight. Here's Barrett. And he hits a line drive to left field. Pesco on the run. Can't get there. He drops safely. Michael Barrett thinking about two. Puts on the brakes. Stumbles, but gets back safely. Well, almost puts on the brakes, but he looked like he had a blowout around first base. Michael's hit the ball very well tonight. Is one for four, one for three to show for it. And he's thinking about two. And then. And dives back. <laughs> Not an artistic success, but a base hit nonetheless. How about the ball he hit in the second inning? I see he's got to be shaking his head. Well, the same thing shot. in the fourth. He hit a rocket to right center field, but long fly out. So the softest swing of the night gets him aboard with an eighth inning single. Here's Derek Lee. The moths are starting to come out. You, you know your wallet? No, no, you know me. Be nice to me. It's cicada season when we get back oh, to Chicago. I, you're right. Oh, they're fine looking creatures. <laughs> and I know you're such you're a very light sleeper, you've told me. You're gonna really enjoy the song of the cicada when we get back home. Well, he was a teammate of mine. You remember Len Cicada? Or was that Orla Cicada? Or, or, oh, you say cicada, I say cicada. Orlando Cicada. <laughs> Every 17 years they come That's around, exact. and I can't you've wait for them this year. Was this the seventh time in your life you've seen them? <laughs> Seemingly. <laughs> Just feels that way on this road trip. Oh, what a two to Derek Lee. And he's down. Tell you what, this, this Padre bullpen's living up to the press clippings tonight. They've thrown well all year, and what Tassik hasn't given up much yeah four hits but no runs in two and two thirds now well, Bruce to the top go. elected to go with him with two outs and he allowed a to hit for himself it saved him a couple innings out of his bullpen because we got the early turnaround tomorrow with a day game which is the finale of the road trip where the Cubs head home and take on what they hope will be the bondsless Giants. And if you missed it, Bonds has not played the last couple of games with back spasms. And the Giants have not gotten off to a good start. They're still 500 already eight games out of first place out west. Oh, 
Macias looking for another two-hit game tonight. Little flare, he might have it. He is going to have it. Long, deep spirit, but Michael watching the play unfold before his very eyes in safely at second. Macias, two more hits out of the leadoff spot. Then went off the end of the bat, and we're seeing a lot of loopers here in San Diego. Terrence Long with a decoy. And Latasic is getting peppered with base hits, but so far the Cubs don't have anything to show for it. 14 in total for Dusty Baker's attack tonight. 7 4 is the score. A little more would be nice. Right through there for strike one call. Again, it's David Wells and Glendon Rush tomorrow. That'll be a Fox Sports Net Chicago telecast. David Wells was real disappointed not to oppose Kerry Wood. He enjoyed seeing Kerry in Chicago while with the Yankees last year. Now the Cubs are hoping to knock him out like Antonio Tarver knocked out Roy Jones Jr. in the second round. Troy Hawkins throwing in the pen. I asked David Wells, you know, he wore Babe Ruth's hat while pitching for the Yankees. He said he's got to find a Ted Williams hat. Ted, of course, a native of San Diego, played Pacific Coast League baseball here back in the 30s. David Wells, a native San Diegan, pitching at home at the ripe old age of 41. sure you'll be able to find a hat but sooner you'll find whatever else you might be looking for one two pitch a little outside it's two and two Kemp could make it a whole lot more comfortable with a base hit here arms in the outfield aren't too good all the way around He'll stay alive. That's off to the right and out of play. White Sox fell at home earlier today. Minnesota beat them four to one. Torrey Hunter hit a couple of home runs. And Esteban Loiza dropped his third consecutive game for the Sox. So Minnesota with that victory now a three game lead in the Central. The Twins have won five consecutive games are 14 and 6 against the Central Division. A lot of changes for the Twins. They're atop the pile in the AL Central. 2-2 pitch. He thought he struck him out, but CB Buckner had other ideas. It's full. Advantage now to Barrett and Macias. They'll be off to the races with two outs. Fernandez wants it outside, but this one is off the plate. And you can yank it back all you want, but you can't pull CB on that one. Here comes the 3-2. Runners go. Breaking ball, fly ball into straightaway left. Ryan Pusco has plenty of room, and that will retire the side. Great catch by one of the fans here in San Diego earlier. The Cubs get two more hits, leave two more stranded, but have snagged a 7-4 lead in the middle of the eighth. Another walk by a tree eleven who forces Skipper to make a decision here. Hey, you've reached the bullpen. Neither Dave, your lefty, or Bill, your closer are in right now, but you leave a message after the beep. We'll call you right back. Nice day for a ball game, eh, ladies? Fresh, smooth, real Bud Light. Yeah, I'm left-handed. It's all here. But I have this feeling. 
Really? I love sports. You love sports. I do. You love basketball, hockey, baseball, football, golf. No, I don't. But you have Comcast Digital Cable. You have access to more sports than I could only dream of. Oh, well, I just got it for all the movie channels. I never, ever watch sports. It's on sale now, so you can get it, too. I'll call you. Comcast Digital Cable. Just $24.99 per month for three months. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. Be a happy camper with big savings from Menards. A Coleman 9x7 Deluxe Outdoorsman Tent is on sale, $49.99 after $5 rebate. A queen-size quick bed with bedding and air pump is $29.99 after rebate. Keep hot foods hot and cold foods cold with a 12-volt cooler warmer. Or how about a 2 million candle power rechargeable halogen spotlight? Your choice, $19.99 each. Menards lights your way to savings. Save big money at Menards. The average driver spends a mere 1% of the time in reverse. Yet considering what's at stake, that's 1% we didn't want to ignore. The backup camera, available in the Lexus RX 330. At your Chicago area Lexus dealer. Well, that couple obviously using the cell phone to call their friends and family to tell them that they caught a pop fly at Petco Park tonight. And I thought when I read the trip the other day that Mark Brady and Skip Ellison, who were extensively quoted about the cell phone use by fans at the ballpark, I thought they said they weren't going to show that stuff anymore. Well, extensively quoted was the key to that. However, it was a pretty good catch. Hernandez with a long home run to his credit tonight. Sergio Mitre in line to run his record at two and two. Cubs bidding to take the first two games of this series. Oh and two from Kyle. And that's downstairs. One ball, two strikes. And a nice homestand coming up for the Cubs, albeit a brief one. The Giants are in for three. The Cardinals are in for three. Then we take our first look at the Houston Astros, a two-game series at Minute Maid Park. Then up we go to Pittsburgh, four games in three days. Friday the 28th, a doubleheader, you recall. Then back home to start the month of June with a real long homestand. Houston, the Pirates, and a four-gamer with the St. Louis Cardinals again. We're going to see a whole lot of the Cardinals because the last time the Cubs will look at them is July 20th. As long as they're in the rearview mirror of the Cubs, that's going to be a, a favorable bit of scheduling. If it's the other way around. You really have to work extra hard to, to catch up. Kyle's got to throw a strike here. You don't want to walk the leadoff man. And that's nowhere near. Kyle has seen four hitters. Three of them have reached. So here's Khalil Green. And don't miss Lion Power Day. Saturday, May 22nd, the Cubs will take on the Cardinals. That's a 12-20 start. The first 5,000 fans, 13 and younger, get a Cubs fan Hubert plush toy. This limited edition doll is the official mascot lion of Harris Bank. Lion Power Day is Saturday, May 22nd. Green swung at a bad wall. There's a break. Nothing in one your count. Well, he's going to make the mistakes of youth, but he's got a chance to be a real good one. When you're three runs down with a pitcher with some control problems, you like to take that first pitch. He didn't. Well, Troy Hawkins continues to work. Kyle is throwing the ball hard, but without much luck in the strike zone. A ball and a strike. Well, that was nasty.
took a little off and Green is down on strikes. He didn't swing at a strike in the at bat but good at sliders from Barnesworth. This one dips out of the zone. So Robinson bats for Watasek who did a valiant job for the Padres three scoreless innings. He scattered five hits struck out four and Robinson will dig in. We always have to watch the bunt with Robinson although he doesn't do it particularly well. Ramirez is in the third. Late swing and out of play. Man hit into a triple play surely a double play is not too much to ask. He hasn't hit into one yet. He is two for ten as a pinch hitter this year. He looked like he could get around on the Farnsworth fastball very well. There is the punch. Kyle with a bare hand tried. Holes to first and got his man. Oh, what a play. That was a great effort by Farnsworth. And before it's all said and done, might turn out to be a game saver. This is a real difficult play to make. An off-balance throw. Kyle shows you great athleticism, and he is out at first. So Robinson lays down a real good bunt, and he's got great speed. But he can't beat it out as he goes for a head-first dive. We've seen a lot of that this year. Man, oh man, have we seen some defense in this series. And that was an outstanding effort from Kyle Farnsworth. And he'll go to the top now and Burroughs digs in for San Diego. He's got a couple of hits and a score twice. And there's a rocket right center field. That's got trouble written all over it. That's going to score Hernandez. And Burroughs in at second with a double. And that's why that play by Farnsworth was so big. Three hit night for Burroughs at 7 5, and I think Dusty's going to go get Latroy Hawkins into this game. Kyle goes an inning if indeed he comes out. You figure that's the case. Oh, you could two take walks, that to the bank here. Two walks, two hits. And Dusty out with CB Buckner making sure. That uh, they've got the double switch just how the Cubs want it. 7 5 with two outs. It's closer than you'd like. Damian Jackson's going to come into the game, as will Latroy Hawkins. We'll step aside and come back to Petco Park in a moment. The station where you can still get your friends fix at 6 is ready to give you Cubs ticks. Next week, watch Friends at 6 on WGN. When you see the Friends Fix at 6 phone number during the show, call in. If you're the ninth caller, you and a friend walk away with two tickets to a Cubs home game and a Friends party pack. We won! Next week, when you can still see Friends at 6 on WGN. Life is good again! Look for the Get Your Friends Fix at 6 and Win Cubs Ticks contest only from WGN. Chicago's WB. WGN News Monday. Think you've taught your child not to talk to strangers? Wait till you see what our cameras caught. Will your child fall prey to a perfect stranger? How to keep your child safe from stranger danger. Monday on WGN News at 9. WGN News Tuesday. The Great Lakes contain 80% of North America's fresh water supply. But who makes sure it's fresh? Tom Skilling sets sail on a floating lab to find out. On board the Lake Guardian. Tuesday on WGN News at 9. It's finale week on the WB. Starting Sunday, Charmed, a full night event. Seventh Heaven, Gilmore Girls. He's married. Smallville. I'm not going anywhere! Plus the final episode of Angel. This is my fight. Finale week on the WB, fresh from the frog. This fever for you is just burning me all up inside. Oh. Premiering Monday at 8 on WGN. And I would say that there's been happier fellows than Kyle Farnsworth when he left the game. Obviously, the chair's fault. 
I can understand being upset, but that's not a real wise course of action. No, because there is a real young fellow in that. Loretta shoots that ball to center. Patterson tracks it down, and that takes care of San Diego in the eighth. Kyle didn't have a good night. Hawkins cleans up the eighth inning mess, and it's a two-run game after eight. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Over 2,800 nonstop daily flights to 60 destinations all across the country. Seven five here in the ninth inning. Cubs still have the lead. Before we tell you about the new San Diego pitcher, let's first step aside and tell you what's coming up on WGN. This May, catch all your favorite episodes of Friends all month long. Your favorite friends will always be here for you. Weeknights at six and ten, only on WGN, Chicago's WB. Kenori Otsuka comes in for San Diego, a former star with Osaka and Shinichi in the Japanese Baseball League, and he's got a real unorthodox delivery. Well, he throws a fastball 92-93, but he also has a terrific split finger, and talking with the folks around the Padres, they say that he can paint the corners with that fastball, which has made him awfully tough. And he will have a most unusual delivery. And you saw it just in that close-up shot when he puts his hands in his glove, he brings the ball out and puts it back in and makes his delivery. In fact, I think the Mets were here and played a game under protest because they thought he was blocking. That protest was denied by baseball, and then that delivery is legal from the windup. He doesn't use it if and when he goes to the stretch. So we'll see how the Cubs fare in the ninth inning. A two-run lead now at 7-5. One ball, no strikes to Sammy Sosa. Well, none of the Cubs have seen him, and that makes it a little bit more deceptive, but you're just trying to pick up the baseball. You don't worry about how many times he puts it in the glove. That all the way to the backstop. Ball two to Sammy Sosa. hit a mammoth fifth-inning home run. And it's a play, frankly, that was a swing on the house. Khalil Green, you'll recall, missed a pop-up. Long run, difficult play down the left field line, but one he should have made. It fell harmlessly into foul ground, and Sammy hit the next pitch a mile to left. Well, it led to a five spot in the fifth. And with that catch, the Cubs would have some problems. As it is, they'll have at least two going into the bottom of the ninth. And a big night for Mo. He's a perfect four for four. And he'll hit with Sammy aboard here in the ninth inning. Here's the fifth inning sequence of which we speak. You can see that Green overruns this ball. And then Sammy gets one and hits it a mile. And Aramis comes up with a rolling curveball. And he hits it a mile. So the Cubs got five. And the Padres have been pecking away. Single runs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth, and that's the difference in this one as the Cubs have out hit the Padres 14 to 9. Here's Moises Alou, a perfect night at the plate. He's 10 out of 21 so far on the road trip, and he's gained 20 points on his batting average so far tonight. Otska having trouble throwing a strike. Want to know your count? Well, he had only walked four in 18 innings. Coming into this appearance, but he hasn't thrown the ball over the plate yet. Otsuka, the first Japanese league player ever to play for the San Diego Padres. He's got a two year deal with them. That's in at the knees for a strike. You just as soon not get the two strikes because the Cubs haven't seen that split finger yet. And that's going to be awful tough to lay off of. He comes right over the top. Good release for both the fastball and the split finger. And that was a dandy. It's like a little slider on the outside corner. You can tell by that little white dot in the back of the ball that it is a slider. At least it was that time. 
Old toward third. And that was caught on the line by Sean Burroughs. Alou retired for the first time in five trips. Burroughs was thinking about firing across the diamond, but apparently unhappy that he couldn't pull the trigger. Well, he's not going to get that play at first as Sammy didn't venture off that far. The only thing you can do is throw it away in that situation. We've seen that once from Adam Eaton when he was in the game. So Damian Jackson, who came in again with the flip-flop batting order. It's here with a man aboard, one out in the ninth inning. Of seven, Padres five. A five run, five hit fifth. The big inning tonight for the Cubs. Dobrowski has worked a couple of games in a row, so Dusty Baker is going to let Troy Hawkins close it out. Damian, a former Padre, might want to look for the fourth ball here. He's down 0-2. Well, the problem with never having seen it, it's going to be that much more difficult. Two outs. And that was 93, and Otska painted the outside corner. You see where Hernandez wants it, and that's exactly where he threw it. So Damian down on strikes. Here's Aramas. He hit his 100th career home run in that fifth inning. Three run shot. He's got nine on the season and already 30 driven in. This is game number 36 for the Cubs. Phil Nevin and Sammy Sosa talking over at first base with two outs in the ninth. Well, Sammy struck out the first two times that he hit tonight. But then he got on base three times in a row. Once with the two run homer that put the Cubs on top a position that they've never relinquished Otska is pretty tough he gives up a leadoff walk and nothing else Latroy Hawkins will try to nail it down when we return Ryan Giles takes a ladder high strike from Latroy Hawkins and the bottom of the ninth inning is underway. Cubs have a 7-5 lead. Well, Giles thought it was high. You can understand why he would think that as he inquires of C.B. Buckner. Good rip. You said something about Giles at the start of this series that I hadn't thought about. Left-hand hitters have trouble hitting the high pitch, and Giles does something with his stance to help him stop from swinging at that pitch. Yeah, he gets down in a bit of a crouch. Now, he's killed the Troy Hawkins over the course of his career, but he does have trouble with letter-high fastballs, and you can see the crouch, which invites the ball down. Not quite down that far, but when Giles gets one down there, he can put a charge into it. And I remember a great hitter by the name of Cecil Cooper, who was a stand-up hitter with Boston, had trouble with the high fastball. When he got to Milwaukee, he got down in a crouch like Rod Carew, invited the ball to a very small strike zone. It was the only place you could pitch him. And then he became a huge power hitter in the American League. Ball two strikes to Giles. Two and two. Plenty of thunder coming up for San Diego. You make a mistake with Giles. They've got Nevin, Klesko, and Long coming up next. Well, here's the key man of the inning. You get Giles out. And then it's a right-handed, right-handed matchup. And Giles has really hurt Hawkins over the course of his career. Two balls, two strikes. Bases empty in the bottom of the ninth inning. Padres with single runs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth have crept back into this game. It's closer than we'd like it. Three balls, two strikes to Brian Giles. Cold third, 
strike over the inside corner, and Giles is letting C.B. Buckner have it. Of the three strikes called, he thinks there was only one good enough to be called. We'll take the break. One man out in the ninth inning. Well, Bruce Bochy just wants to protect Giles, and if there's any heat to be given to C.B. Buckner, he'll be doing it. Out of all the pitches called, this was a pretty good one. Giles thought it was low and inside. And there's a chance that it might have been. Especially when Barrett goes and moves the glove that far down and in. Phil Nevin is 0 for 2 with a couple of walks. That's a huge break. Oh, man, is it ever. That's out of play for a strike. Like all Cub fans, I like the strike zone of C.B. Buckner just fine in the bottom of the ninth inning right now. Let's go on deck. Nevin 0 for 2. Right down the middle. Not much doubt about that one. And Joe Borowski starts to loosen up. Nothing in two to Nevin. Good idea, but Nevin wouldn't do any fishing. Let's go waits next. down on strikes and Barrett will throw him out at first good pickup by Michael Barrett who's much improved in that department that ball was a foot in front of the plate looked to me like Nevin had decided if it stayed in the ballpark he was going to be swinging well that is some kind of stuff watch it again that ball bounced two feet in front of home plate Good effort by Barrett. Jim Hendry, Gary Hughes have long coveted Michael Barrett. And he has been everything the Cubs were hoping for and more, both with the bat and handling and stopping this staff. Well, as he's gotten to know the staff, he's gotten better. Two A outs. Lot better. They're clear for Quesco. He can hit it all the way to Los Angeles, and the Cubs would still have the lead. Strike one from Hawkins and the Cubs fans on their feet at Petco Park. One ball, one strike. Over 42,000 here tonight. And there's still a whole lot of Cub fans cheering on LaCroix Hawkins. They got the big blue W ready to go with one more out to get. One ball, one strike. I pop. We're one strike away from remaining a game back in the Central and winning this series outright. strikes well, as hard as Terrence Long hit the ball last time up and just as soon we take a look at him tomorrow he's in the on deck circle and he hit a rocket back at Farnsworth to end the seventh inning here's the 2 2 pitch fly ball center field pretty deep not deep enough Corey's there Cubs win it 7-5 Sergio Mitre in his hometown picks up his second win the Cubs again Steve play long ball they hit another couple of home runs and they beat up on Adam Eaton and the Padres 7-5 the final one of the big advantages the Cubs have over the Padres they have a whole lot more power and they showed it tonight and in the end, it was LaTroy Hawkins who came out of that bullpen and 
through some great baseball late. The Cubs have taken the first two game of the series. They're three and two on the West Coast swing, and they stay just a short game out of first place. What a ball game tonight. Seven five again. The final. We'll take a quick break and come back and recap it right after this. Hawkins picks up his third save with an inning and a third of perfect relief tonight. And it was a thunder in the middle of the lineup that got the job done for the Cubs. Moises Alou with four hits, Sammy a two-run bomb. And what preceded the two-run homer is our Budweiser play of the game. Yeah, Khalil Green, a tough play, but one he should have made. He didn't. And on the next pitch, Sammy hit the longest home run in the very brief history of Petco Park. And the Pets went crazy. Indeed. Dog day evening for Padre fans. The Cubs love and life. A three-game win streak keeps them a game out of first place. They win the series outright, and they go for the sweep tomorrow. We're back home against the Giants Tuesday night. That'll be on the Cubs television network. Jason Schmidt against Matt Clement. Our next Cubs WGN telecast is Friday at 2 o'clock. We'll host the St. Louis Cardinals in game one of a big weekend series. Remember, fast turnaround, so get your rest. Indeed. Sleep fast, friends. Cubs and Padres wrap it up tomorrow for Steve Stone and our entire crew, anchored by our fine producer, Pete Toma. Chip Carey from the ballpark, inviting you to stay tuned for the WGN News. It's coming up next. Good night, everybody.